Hello and welcome back to 12 of these years in the Thunder Game Engine. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to incorporate animation into your game. Let's go ahead and jump in. I'll click on my splash screen to get rid of it. And the first thing I'll do, of course, is change my render engine up here over to the Blender Game Engine. The next thing I have to do is make a few more windows in my interface. I need a timeline and a dope sheet. So I'll grab this little cross-hatched area and drag it straight down to divide the window into two. And I'll do the same thing to this smaller window. So I'll grab the little top cross hatch area and drag it straight down. And this bottom window will be a timeline. And the window right above it will be a dope sheet editor window. Now for this example, I'm going to be using my default cube as a bad guy in my game. My bad guy is going to be wandering back and forth and back and forth, or pacing basically. And to do this, we're going to be using animation and we're going to be using a logic bricks to drive that animation forward and looping over and over and over again. Now, you might recall earlier in this video series, I made a video on a bad guy moving back and forth, but I did that programmatically. I did that using uh, a motion actuator and states. States was the key to having two different behaviors with this bad guy. In one state, he moved to the right, and in the other state, he moved to the left, and we used the timed state switching to do that. What I'm getting at here is that it is better to do motion that will be used in physics in your game programmatically. If you make animation, it's really just for effect, for the looks of it. It should not be part of an or an integral part of the physics of your game. I notice it tends to work better if you do motion programmatically rather than with animation. Okay, let's go ahead and press 1 and 5 to go to our front orthographic view. And I need to turn on animation. So I'll press this little red record button on the header of my timeline window. Click, and let's go ahead and press uh, G, but I'm gonna be on frame zero. So I'll just drag the playhead down to frame zero. Great, let's go ahead and put the bad guy over here, G, and then I'll put him right about there. I've got my red record button turned on, therefore I now have a keyframe at frame zero of my bad guy in that location. Now our game runs at 60 frames per second. That's in our game settings over here. It's right here, our refresh rate 60. You can change it if you want to. I'm not going to. I want my cube or my bad guy to go over across the screen in one second. So in my timeline, I'll click right here and I'll type 60 and press enter. Now we're at frame 60. In fact, I'll drag the little into the scroll bar back on the dope sheet so we're not going so far to right about there. That looks pretty good to me. And on frame 60, I'll drag my cube over to right about there. And because I've got the red record button turned on, it made a second keyframe. So now I've got an animation from point A to point B. I want the cube to go back to where it started though because it's gonna be a looping animation. That's very important. I could make a more complicated animation of my cube, let's say wandering around a maze like a ghost in Pac-Man. And that would be fine. Of course, that would be, you know, a ghost on a set track, not following in any kind of intelligent way. Um, but I would need to, in that case, make sure my ghost ended up at the exact same spot as he started at so that it would loop nicely. To do that, I'm going to select the first keyframe in my dope sheet editor window, where, of course, I can right click to select these keyframes and I'll duplicate it. So shift D on my keyboard and I'll drag it out to exactly frame 120 because we're working at one second each here. And let's go ahead and go back to the beginning and let's press play. And as you can see, I've got a cube going from point A to point B and then back to point A. You'll notice though that the cube is not going. In fact, I'll press escape and I'll change the end of my timeline down to 120 and press enter so it'll loop nicely now. Uh, that does not matter so much in this case. But what you will notice here is that the cube is not moving at a constant speed. It's kind of speeding up and then slowing down when it goes to its end. You'll notice it kind of speeds up and then slows down, and then it speeds up and then slows down. To stop that from happening, I'm going to change the interpolation mode of these first two keyframes, which control the first two sections. So I'll select uh, that keyframe there. By the way, you can hide this top summary line by clicking on summary and then you can collapse the cube action so you only see one keyframe for the one action. Uh, with this first keyframe selected, I'll go to key, interpolation mode, and these three interpolation modes, constant, linear, and bezier. Bezier is the default, which makes time curved or it makes the things speed up and slow down. Uh, we don't want that, we want linear. 
Okay, so I've had the first one selected, let's do it again with the second one. I'll select the second keyframe, key, interpolation mode, linear. And so what that did is that now if I press play, it'll move in a constant speed. I know it's weird that we use the linear option instead of the constant option, but that's what makes things a constant speed. It makes things a straight line in terms of their speed over time on a graph. Okay, let's go ahead and we have to name this animation. Believe it or not, all animations in Blender are called actions. That's what we're working with, actions. That's the actuator we're going to be working with, uh, the action actuator. I don't have anything to say uh, in the logic editor window. But first, I'm going to turn off my red record button. That's important to do, as it always is. We want to change our dope sheet editor window into an action editor window, and that's actually a subtype of this window. So down here it says dope sheet. I'll change this dope sheet editor window into an action editor window, which looks exactly the same. I'm not sure why there's many different options here, uh, but the action editor window is where you can actually see the name of this action, and it's called cube action. I'm going to change it to bad guy action zero one, and I'll press enter. And so now this block of animation data has a name. Now I want to actually get rid of it from the cube for now because we don't want to have it on the cube by default. We want to tell it to do that or be on this cube um, programmatically using logic bricks. I'm going to click this X, but before I do, I'm going to press this F. This F means fake user. And when you press the F, you'll see a little two. That means that Blender or this Blender file thinks that there are two objects or two things using uh, this action, this bad guy action 01. Now it's not really true, but when we press this X to remove bad guy action one from the cube, we want something to still be using this action because Blender kind of clears out the trash or clears out the garbage. Um, if nothing is using this action, then it gets deleted, I believe. That's why we have this F fake button. Just click it and then click the X. That'll make sure that it's always gonna be in this file. It's not gonna disappear on you later on. Okay, so we've got a cube. We've made an action. We've called it bad guy action 01. And let's go ahead and make these bottom windows a little bit uh, taller. And let's make this bottom window into a logic editor window. Okay, I'll scroll to zoom that out so we can see everything here. I don't need any properties, so I'll press N on my keyboard. By the way, on a PC, I believe, this is on a Mac right now, properties are on the other side, but it's still, I believe, the N key, I hope. With our cube selected, we're going to add an always sensor. We want the animation or the action to always be playing. So, add sensor, always, and that's, of course, with the cube selected. And we don't have to change anything else here. We're going to add a action actuator. It's fun to say, an action actuator. And we're going to connect them up. So now we're always going to be playing an action. Well, in the options here, we can specify a few things. We're going to say the action, which is this little icon here. So we only have one action in our whole Blender file. It's bad guy action 01. Now here's the thing. These logic bricks, or this logic brick in particular, has to know exactly what our start and end frames are. My start frame uh, is 0, I set to that on purposely, and the end frame is 120. It's important to know that, so if you can't remember what yours is, you can make a new dope sheet window, you can look at the action and you can see the end frame and the start frame, or you can just use a part of that action too. It's totally up to you. So, I think everything's set up. Let's go ahead and press P with our mouse cursor in our game window. P and you can see the action happening, the cube's moving at a linear or constant speed, and it stops. And the reason why that happens, I'm gonna go ahead and press escape on my keyboard, is because we have this play option. Play, plays the action, that's great, it does not loop. You can change this though to loop end or loop stop, and to be honest, I'm not sure which or why there are two or what the difference is here, but they both work for this kind of a situation. So let's go ahead now with loop end and press P, and as you can see, the animation will loop. That'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.